Following two gang homicides and a series of arsons in Oportiki last week, there is a strong police presence in the eastern Bay of Plenty town with armed officers on patrol and shops and schools closed. Today, the tangi of one of the deceased Mongol mob leader Tsiwana Tayatini is being held and we cross now to Okaha producer Kiriama Wright in Oportiki. Kiriama Nga Mihinui Kiaakwe, can you tell us what the mood is in the town right now? I'm here in Oportiki outside the house of Tiwana Tayatini, the captain of the Mongol mob, who was slain on Friday night. His body just left this address for Whakatane, where he will be cremated, along with about 1,000 uh, Mongol mob members from across the country. This is a tragedy that's hit this community, not only Oportiki, but the Mongol mob community. I spoke to the Fane spokesperson about this tragedy earlier. Firstly, um, how is the whānau feeling today, the final day of, of um, Tiwana? Absolutely devastated because he's a phenomenal leader for our community, not just the Mongol mob, but also for our um, rangatahi, uh, for our fathers, uh, for our young young people here in Oportiki. He was all about whānau, he was a whānau driven man and he was about creating leadership within our brothers. Um, they, they become good fathers, they become good sons um, and they, they put that into their tamariki and mokopuna. And so he was always about working from the inside out rather than the outside working for us. Does that make this a huge tragedy? Oh, absolutely. And he ngā wari te kite i te hunga whakaike. Um, you had Pākehas, you had the mayor, you had um, the church leaders, you had um, principals of Ngākura, and those were all people that come to pay their respects to a great man who actually contributed in some way um, to creating good for our people and it was about the well-being and the oranga of our people and whatever the people wanted to determine that is. But he was always about the greater good. Yeah. How's the wider community feeling at this stage, knowing that there, there, there's that um, tension between the Mongol mob and the Black Power still existing? Today? Well, you know, that tension's always been in all Portuguese. Eh? This is not something new to us. But the community as itself um, is very quiet, and I think that is just to give respect to the whānau, to allow them that space to grieve. Um, the whānau opted to have their tangihanga here so that their members could do what they wanted to do. Um, but it was guided by Tikanga because his wife is an advocate for Te Ao Māori um, in her oranga as well. And so we were able to create space with um, Te Ao Māori and... Uh, yeah. From the outside looking in, um, you know, the general public is looking at Oportiki in a state of turmoil. Is that the case here? Absolutely not. It, uh, the, it's totally opposite to that. For our whānau, sick. For our whānau, um, it's about coming together, it's about um, remembering the great that our man, it's about celebrating all his mahi, um, it's about manaking all our manakitanga to all our manuhiri that come from as far as uh, the South Island. You know, so they still had core values to uphold and they'd done it amazingly. Um, and that was the brothers, the mothers, the community, um, the support from our trust board, all those sorts of things. The police. What sort of mahi needs to happen after this to ensure that, you know, we don't have another tangihanga? Well, there's, there's always going to be tangihanga, um, but in terms of the oranga for this kaupapa here, um, there's going to have to be some big and there's going to have to be some big discussions held between hapu leaders here. Um, we don't have to look too far to know um, where, how this tragedy started and how it's going to end. Um, so for us it's about making sure that we have that wraparound service with our sister and that we're constantly talking about what is the huarahi forward and not leaving it dormant um, and making sure that our tamariki and our mokopuna are at the forefront of our decision making process.